Hey everyone, my name is Sam and I'm an average Joe Lawn Nut. So a couple of weeks ago, I started killing off my lawn and this is part of my lawn renovation. I'm not sure I should call it a lawn renovation because I really don't need one. So about three and a half, four weeks ago, I did the first application of Roundup. I'm not gonna go into how I killed off the lawn. I'll put a link to the video right here if you wanna watch that. So today I will be moving on to the leveling part of it. So I'm gonna level everything off as best as I can and then reseed everything. So that's what we're doing today. Later on, I'll show you what kind of grass type I've chosen for this, but we'll discuss that later in the video. So stick around for that. So right now, let me just show you the tools I will be using. So of course I have a lot of shovels. I will be using the leveling rake for the kind of fine tuning of it. I'm not going to use the leveling rake for the entire lawn. I will be using the wooden pallet instead. Is it called a pallet? Wooden pallet? 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 Ah, a wooden pallet. I'm going to use this for leveling. I will be putting out small piles all over the lawn and then I will be leveling it with this. It is quite heavy but if I see that it's not pressing down the soil as much as I want I will I have some bags of gravel that I will just put on it to kind of weigh it down a bit more but I think it will be fine so I will be using this and then I'll go over it with a garden roller as well just to kind of press everything down and we'll see how it works out and I've actually called in some reinforcements for this I have my son's cousin here I mean I'm an old man I need help my back isn't cut out for this work anymore so let's just get started with getting all the soil out onto the lawn and then we'll start leveling it We're done with the soil now. It's not all of the four tons. So now I'll just run over it with this thing and then run over it with the garden roller as well, just to give me an indication where I still have low spots after the soil is pressed down. So I have to do this in different iterations or steps. So this is just the first one. I still have some soil left. I'm actually worried now that I might run out. Four tons seems so much, but then when you actually get to it, you notice that it's really not. But again, it's not the end of the world. I get to level it out some of the deeper spots. I don't need a perfectly leveled lawn. I just want the deeper spots to be more leveled. But if I have some variation, I don't really care. All right, so let's move on with this and see where we go on after this. So we kind of spread out the soil we had using the pallet and I'm going around doing some fine tuning with the leveling rake and Adam is running the garden roller just to press the soil down so I can see where we might need to add some more and just to make sure that it's perfectly leveled. Oi! This was a lot of work. Kind of glad I have some reinforcements but it is working a bit slow isn't he? take forever why don't you all right let's keep going it's actually 
actually starting to look pretty good, pretty smooth. I have some areas that I still need to kind of level off a bit, but I have to tell you something. If you're a perfectionist like I am, you really have to control that side of you when you're doing a big project like this. I mean, you just have to face the fact that you're not gonna get everything perfect. It's just not happening. I'm actually going around checking with the rake where I still have some low spots. Even if you're not a perfectionist, this is just a, too big of a gap to leave alone. I have no idea why he's leveling this on top of the rake. Oi! <laughs> there you go. Now you can level it off. But I mean, for the most part, you just have to realize you can't fix everything. Some areas will just be too low even after this, but you'll fix them, I mean, during the season or next year. It's, it's not the end of the world. I keep saying that. Who told you to stop? I think I'm uh, quite uh, finished, quite done here. Quite done here? Yeah. So now we can take the, the water uh, and uh, push the yord down. This is the English they're teaching <laughs> Swedish kids in schools today. Don't you play video games? No, I play video games with my Swedish friends, so I speak Swedish to them. Yeah. Well, there you go. Apart from just doing some spot leveling here and there, then I think we're finished in the back at least. Then we'll move on to the side. This takes a lot of time, a lot of effort. I'm really glad of the help. So I thought I'll just go through what I'm using for soil. This is called Kadres. It's sold in Sweden. It's sand based and it's mineral enriched. So it's an 11.518 MPK. So it's already fertilized. I don't need to have a starter fertilizer when using this. And as I said, it's mostly sand, but it's not all sand. If you've seen my video regarding sand, you know that I don't like to use purely sand on the lawn. So Kadres is my go-to material and it's a really good and fine material. I love this stuff. So this will help me fertilize and improve the soil, give me more life into the soil and also help me level everything and give me a starter fertilizer. It's a perfect product for this. The only problem is that since last year, the price has gone up. It cost about twice what it used to do just a year ago. So it's pretty expensive, but I think the most expensive part is just the shipping. Getting stuff here, it, I think that costs twice as much as the actual soil. I'm all, almost done with the side area. I'll show you how it looks in a minute. So we're actually done with all the soil, all the leveling. It took about four, five hours and I used about three tons of soil. I actually thought I would need more, but three tons is what I used and the rest I will just save and use for leveling during the season. So. I mean, it's not wasted or anything. And I think I got most of the low spots. I mean, as I said, you can't be a perfectionist when you're doing this or you'll just end up doing this for a week. Let me show you guys how it looks. So this is how the lawn is looking at the moment. A lot of soil, a lot of leveling. Let me show you the side area. So this is how the side looks. I had a lot of holes here and there. It's always, it always amazes me how much soil actually goes into a small hole. I mean, you see that you have a low spot and then you go pick up a shovel of uh, soil and notice that you will need an entire wheelbarrow of soil, not just a shovel. I think we managed to cover most of the low spots. There might be some here and there, but as I said, we'll fix them in, during the season. So this is the front. I'm not sure how well the camera is picking this up, but the front I kind of just rebuilt all over. The whole area was a low spot. I've had so much stuff put on here, so the whole the entire area just sank. So I've kind of rebuilt it back up with the K-dress and hopefully the amount of sand in it will make sure that it does keep stable. But you never know. You might need to work on this for a couple of seasons as well. One thing I would like to point out is if you're doing something like this, a total lawn renovation, don't expect it to be a one-time job and then you're done, your lawn is gonna look great. You don't have to do it anything ever again. This will give you a great start, a great bed, but you will need to keep at it. I mean, the ground will shift, it will move, so you're gonna have low spots again next year. It's not a one-time thing. You'll just have to keep working on it. Make sure you remember that. Since it does take a lot of effort to do this, I just wanna make sure you know that it's not enough by doing this one time and then you're done 
you never have to touch the lawn ever again. But I have to say, it's really satisfying once you're done. I mean, it's a lot of hard work. It's been exhausting four or five hours, but I mean, I feel so happy when it's done. All right, so now it's time to put the seed down. So I'm uh, gonna go get the seed and we'll talk about what seed I've chosen and why. So let me just get the seed. Okay, so let's start talking about the seed I've chosen. I had to actually sit down for this part. I'm absolutely exhausted. I don't want to stand up anymore. <laughs> So the seed I've chosen is actually Baron Brugg's RPR. So, so there's several reasons for that. One of them being, I've seen a lot of people writing some stuff in the forums, in the grass forums about this, how they don't like it, how it doesn't really survive Swedish winters. So of course, then I want to try it out. And I actually want to try out a monostan, just one type of grass. I mean, that might change if I don't like it, if it's too hard to maintain, especially since if you have one grass type, it's so obvious if something else creeps in. But I mean, it's easier to add more grass types than take one away. So I'll start with this and see how it works. And this contains 50% RPR and 50% English ryegrass. So it's 100% ryegrass, but it's not 100% only RPR. One more reason is that the timing. I mean, if I am to do this before the summer heat comes, I can't do any Kentucky bluegrass. That's just gonna take way too much time. I mean, for Kentucky bluegrass to establish, you're gonna need at least six to eight weeks, I think. So I really don't have time for ryegrass either, but I think this will increase my success rate at least. Everyone has creeping red fescues in the Swedish lawn, pretty much everyone. So I thought I wanted to try something different. That's the reasoning behind this. And I actually bought this from a Swedish company called Exceed. They normally cater to golf courses and stuff, but they, and they don't sell this to private consumers really. It's for the professional market they have. But if you email them and ask them nicely, they will send you one bag anyways. <laughs> And by the way, if any of you know how to open these things, I mean, there's a trick to it where you can open it easily. I never learned it. I have no idea how it works. So I always start off by trying to do it, but then I kind of lose patience and just get a scissor or knife or something like that. So if any of you know exactly how this works, please let me know. <laughs> hey! <laughs> I did it! <laughs> I swear this must be the first time I've actually made it. <laughs> I always try to do it like that. I've seen other people do it like that, but I've never managed to do it like that. All right, so I have the seeds here. I always use pretty much twice the amount it says on the bag. I've never followed the instructions on any seed bag with the amount that you should spread and had a good germination. I always end up using twice the amount or even more. Right or wrong, I have no idea, but every time I use the amount they say you should use, I always end up with a lot of bare spots here and there. Just to save myself some work, I'd rather use too much. So I have my little helper over there doing the edges. Now I'm just gonna use my handheld spreader just to do around the middle parts. And as I said, I'm gonna use more than the bag actually recommends just because I'm used to it. I've done the recommended amount before and it always ends up with a lot of bare spots. So. All right, I think we got most of the seeds down. Now I put Adam on going on everything with the garden roller, get that good seed to soil contact, and then we're gonna cover it with a nice thin layer of soil as well. Otherwise this is just gonna blow away or the birds are gonna eat it up. Can you move so I can continue my work here? Please? Kids these days. All right, so while Adam is going around with the garden roller, I'm gonna start with the Lanzi use the soil I had left, put a nice thin layer of soil on top of this. That will help the seeds to keep moist and it will also protect it from wind and birds and stuff like that. All right, so now let's go get the soil and start using the Lanzi. I love this thing. I'm actually curious to see if the Lanzi can handle such a sandy material or if it's just gonna let it through too easily. I mean, top dress is one thing, but a sandy material like this, 
We'll see. All right, so the lens actually let through too much of that fine material. I'm gonna run out if I just use that one. So I actually ended up buying a lot of regular top dress. I'm gonna use that instead, especially since this stuff is actually expensive. <laughs> this stuff isn't. So I might as well just use the cheaper stuff since that's just for covering the seeds. I don't need any fancy material for that. Just to save some money and I'll actually waste all this good fine material. I just ended up buying this. So we'll use this instead. <laughs> I know a lot of Americans at least use peat moss to do this. I've actually never seen or heard anyone use peat moss in Sweden. I'm not sure if that's just an American thing. Let me know in the comments below if you're from any other place in America and you're actually using peat moss to do this. I, I wouldn't even know where to buy peat moss. We use top dress. I've never seen anyone use peat moss. That's just not a thing in Sweden at least. This part is where I use the Lansy with the nice K dress. And as I said, it's, it just put out too, way too much. So I switched to top dress where you can see. So now the real pain starts. Now you have to water this in and keep it moist until it germinates. And that's actually the real pain since, I mean, I have a normal nine to five job. So if the weather keeps up like this, that means watering this in at least a couple of times a day just to keep it moist, which will be a challenge, but we'll see how it goes. I mean, you can only do what you can do. If you miss water this in and it dries out, I mean, that might be it for some of the seeds. Then you have to overseed those areas again. You're gonna end up with a bare spot, but it is what it is. I mean, if you have a job to do, you can't stay at home all day long just to keep this moist. <laughs> I wish I could, but I can't. But well, maybe I'll ask my in-laws to help out. I mean, they're retired. They don't have anything better to do than to keep my lawn moist. <laughs> but that's the only step remaining. So let me just water this in. Then I guess I have to start tidying everything up. And I actually haven't started up my Hunter irrigation system yet. I had to dig up some of the heads because I had to put down new wires for the robo mower. So I haven't gotten around to fixing that. So I only have two at the moment and I haven't really tried them out after winter or tested them. So I'm just gonna water this on my own. I mean, either with the oscillating sprinkler or just by hand. I mean, it's you don't have to water in for that many minutes. It just needs to be moist. You don't need to overwater it. All right, as you can see, I ended up doing it by hand since it's pretty windy out. So I don't think the oscillating sprinkler will actually work. It, the wind is just gonna make the water go everywhere and I'm gonna miss some areas. So for the first time, I thought it would be best to do it by hand. Then I can make sure that I actually keep everything wet at least for the first day or two. But I mean, doing this every day, four times a day, as I said, this is the real pain. The work was kind of fun. But I think we're having rain in two days, something like that. So hopefully that will help. I don't have to water it in that much. But I mean, it's pretty fun. It's pretty satisfying to go around making sure everything is moist. <laughs> in a weird way. I watered this in manually and I've actually put the oscillating sprinkler on the side. It wasn't that windy on the side. I've been at it since 11 and right now it's 6.15. So that took about seven hours of work. I mean, of course I had lunch and everything in between and then I actually had help. I mean, imagine doing this all alone. I wouldn't recommend anyone to do this alone. But even though I'm absolutely exhausted, it's been so much fun. <laughs> <laughs> I guess that's why I have a screw loose. I still think this was so much fun. And it's so satisfying when you're done. It's almost like working out. It's a pain in the ass, but when you're done, it's a pretty good feeling. So this is how it looks at the moment. I'm wondering in this area where I used the Lansy for the topsoil I had, I'm wondering if this was actually too thick layer. We'll see how much it grows here or not. 
but I mean don't stress too much over it if you have areas that d doesn't grow or something happens or if we want to go to the hot tub I'm gonna walk over this I don't care uh, I'm not gonna be that pedantic about no one is allowed to put a single step onto the lawn it's, uh, of course you shouldn't walk on it unnecessarily but if I want to get over there or if I want to go over there I'm walking all over it <laughs> I don't care I mean you just have to overseed you're gonna have bare spots anyways there's no way I'm gonna get 100% coverage it's just not happening I've never all right so my microphone actually died this was a good limit test with the microphone and everything as well I just kept talking and at some point I realized the microphone thing isn't going back and forth <laughs> but as I was saying I will I'm not expecting to get 100% coverage you never do I mean of course I'm not gonna play football on this but I mean I'm not gonna be that particular about who walks on it or not just be careful walking on it that's it but I mean you're gonna have to oversee it and get to bare spots anyways that's it now I'm gonna go in and enjoy just doing nothing for a while <laughs> but thank you guys for watching and if you have any questions about this project or anything just leave it in the comments below and I'll try to help you as best as I can but yeah thank you guys for watching and I'll see you in the next one